Uh, next up is an amazing interview and Q&A with Yalti and the gang at Blender Institute. Yeah, this guy. Yay! Hello. And Hello. Uh, and there's Ton and there's Ambushkas. No one. And, and I don't know what do <laughs> that thing in his hand. Uh, no. So can you guys hear me or what? Yeah, we can. So uh, why don't you guys take it away? All right, awesome. So, do we just do the questions then, I guess? Yeah. All right, a little introduction. I mean, just... Oh, yeah. Some, All right. So, so, we are in Amsterdam right now. You're listening to the Amsterdam Blender Institute something. <laughs> Welcome! <laughs> Yay! So, this is Andy Goralczyk. Hey. Hello. On, on Rosendahl here. You might have heard of him. Uh, Dr. Sergei Sharibin. Sharibin. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Good and good. I'm Kjarti Helmosson. I, I'm Hjalti Hjalmarsson. Yeah, I know, nobody. I'm, I have the worst name ever. So let's get maybe on to the question. So I'm an animator. Uh, I animate for the Blender Institute. And you probably met all these guys. This is the guy that's pretty much making Blender. Yes, yes. Well, not alone. Yeah. No, not alone. But like a huge chunk. So all your feature requests, send them in now, quickly, before we lose it. <laughs> you have uh, 57 minutes. 57 minutes. Got Got <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, let me let me kick it off um, real quick for everybody who's watching at home. Blender dot today is the website. You'll see the Blender Institute thread. There's actually been a lot of questions asked since the last time that we did this, and um, you know maybe Tom, if there's a few questions that you want to recap on, or or any of the guys here. Um, there's there's been quite a few questions, but I, I got one off the off the top of my head. Um, let's talk about like Blender animation and and how it's changed. Some um, you're kind of like Yalta, you're like the Blender animator guy. So uh, what are some things that you really you really wish that we like you had? What is there any um, tool that you wish Blender had? Great question. Um, I would say there's a few things. I would say the number one thing so one tiny little thing that we're about to get think, thanks to Ines uh, so Antonis the developer he made this little thing that I was asking him to do it during gooseberry so he made it really quickly and it's a selection sets for the bones so if you're animating and you and you don't want to be using 1000 bones or whatever and keying them constantly and it's going to be too overwhelming it's going to slow down the frame rate so he made this tiny little tool. It's in the add-ons, I think. It's called selection sets. It was never really perfected. It was just, it, it was kind of usable up to a degree. And I love it. It's just a matter of choosing what bones you're gonna, that you want to use. Yeah, I think I Well, probably I'll just keep talking. Right, about, right. Maybe I'll. I'll and, uh, and then you can uh, just quickly select them. And, and uh, that way you can just, in the beginning of your animation, select what bones you, you want to be using for the rest of the animation, and then everything else gets hidden. Um, so Ines has been working on it. I saw one of the versions yesterday, and it's, it's a simple little tool, but it's going to be really cool. And it's hopefully going to be approved by the, the, the nice doctor next to me at some point. I don't heard of Python. No, okay, 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 never mind. Um, but one of the big things I, I wish Blender had right now is is motion paths that didn't just kill the computer. <laughs> motion paths right now slow down the computer so much that it's it's hard to use them, and uh, especially if you have heavy rigs, and especially if you have a scene that ha features more than one uh, character. So I would I would say there's a few things that I can name on top of that, but I think that would be the next big step is that to take the entire motion path thing, make it way smoother, make it lighter. Right now, it's going over every single frame and recalculating the entire rig, every single frame. Frame, whatever. What do you call it? Yeah, frame, okay. Um, which box down the entire uh, CPU or GPU or whatever. I'm not a technical guy. PU. <laughs> box know. down the PU. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I barely know R. I do uh, random, people like it. Well, one more question before we head off to the website, as there's there's quite a few in here. 
um, oh, there's been a lot of talk about like dependency graft and, and in 277 there's this big update about linking so we can finally fix broken links but talk to me about the dependency graph like what's what's coming what's changing why why is this such a big problem and, and <laughs> give that uh, man a beer and let's talk about dependency graphs yes yes so so okay first of all the dependency graph the the kind of the one we've been using now for a while uh because lender has been updating and adding a lot of features and a lot of stuff just like with anything any um, software development you have to sometimes go back and kind of rethink some of the things because it kind of morphs slowly and steadily in in a direction that you maybe you wouldn't expect. So right now, I think, if you, if you put drivers on some loans, uh, like, and you take something like a modifier, like rotational difference, it won't work fully. And that's it. Well, well, it wouldn't work if you use a, a target from the same armature. Kind of thing. Yeah, so any yeah. target from the same armature yeah. inside the array will not work reliably in current dependency graph. This is because dependency graph is operating on object level. It knows how to update the object in, in each order to update objects themselves. And to a certain extent, it knows in which order to update bones. But in most cases, it's it forcing them to take an order for bones, and it, it, it's real hard to fix in current dependency graph. So this is major thing which we new dependency graph currently. And it's already implemented quite nicely in there. I tried it. It worked great. Cool. Well, so, guys. Uh, so, so it's basically to, to, to make all those comprehensive rigs. We, we, we started like we sure just trying to create, make it simpler to create and much more predictable for, for, for artists. So there is no lags in between bone updates. You can use any combination of any targets and any operation on them. And also not only have bones from one armature, but maybe interleave different armatures all together and uh, crazy setups like this. Yeah, and I've, I've had those instances where I have a couple of rigs and they need to, they need to rely on, upon each other. And it's uh, the current dependency graph. I've had issues where one day it's working fine. And then when I reload the file, all of a sudden, every time I, I scrub through the timeline, it's always one frame to make. So it kind of clicks into place one frame too late, uh, and it's not just it's not just in the viewport. It's also if you render the thing. Um, yeah, so this is the man that's going to fix that. It kind of fixes itself. Currently, we need to resolve all the possible regressions in dependency graph and uh, new all, all the features which are not supported. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like physics simulation stuff. Like it's kind of work, but it's kind of work. hey, uh, Oliver. <laughs> Oh. Hey, Oliver. Yeah? You had a little bit of feedback there. Be careful uh, when you unmute yourself. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mute myself. <laughs> oh, okay. No worries. Well, guys, that, that's a great answer. I, I imagine it's a, a massive project, and, uh, and hopefully... Oh, 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 oh. oh no. Sorry. <laughs> you didn't get the memo? Come on. <laughs> I guess I missed the memo. Jeez. That's okay. Um, listen, I, I got a question in, in the chat here that I'm going to ask, and then if you want to move on to the website. Uh, the question in the chat comes from Treasure2. Is it ever possible that the cloth interaction physics can be put into the file the assets are linked into instead of the source file for animation? Does that make sense? So, yeah, that's... I mean, that, I've uh, never actually used... In all my projects, I've never used uh, simulated cloth uh, on top of my animation. Uh, it's usually just done in such a way that it's it's kind of cheating it, and and you can kind of control it. It's already there in the rig, so I don't know. So, so it, I think it's it, it's basically a question is because in Blender there are several ways to cache simulated data, and by default it will use so-called in-memory cache. Where it just stores all, all the simulation in, 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 in your RAM. And then when you save file, it's put into blend file and the active blend file thing. But you can also enable external cache and cache the, the data in, into a sequence of, of basically just binary files, which you then can 
share across multiple files. So, so here in the studio, that's exactly the way we, we, we use the simulation thing. We just dump it to external cache, which then you link for, from preview file, from render file, from final lighting scene, and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And that folder is being reused by, mm -hmm. by all the render nodes, for example. So you can extract the, the actual simulation from linked file to, 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 to actual file, but you cannot do it with basic in-memory caching. So it's a bit of interaction thing and setting up the, the cache simulation. But there is also Andy mm. who, who, who I'm knows still, this simulation. Well, I'm still not sure how, uh, if it's meant like, the, is it, uh, I, don't, I can't see the question right now. But um, so the, the question is, is it possible instead of uh, using in the anim animation file, making the, the class sim in the animation file, putting it in the character file, and then when you have it in the animation file, you just need to click the bake button and then it gets baked. Oh, this way. Like so, oh, this way. Well, yeah, somewhere in the future it's probably possible. It's probably possible in the future, but not currently, right? Because the, I wouldn't think it's possible currently in, in an easy way. way. Yeah. It's probably have some work around for this, but because in Blender you cannot modify any of the linked data, it, it could be a bit difficult to, to do currently. But yeah, it's, you know, all, all these kind of things are in, in the roadmap for, for, for new dependency graph and stuff like this, because we, we need to work on overrides, and this is kind of a sort of override thing. Yeah, but it's also something that uh, Lucas Turner is currently making a design documentation for, which is the, the everything notes system which uh, also includes the caching it, it, it is related but it, it, it's not sort a magic no. bullet so so you you need to make sure that that lucas is aware of this of this request i just need a giant big fake button everywhere no Take it's this. not back it should just Take work <laughs> no caching needed just you put stuff and it just magically works for you yeah but how often does that work mm. Next to never. <laughs> <laughs> by, by pressing the bake button, you make sure that yeah, you yeah, have the yeah. satisfaction that it's now in the oven yeah. and yeah, you're going to yeah. get something yeah. <laughs> sooner or later. I'm getting yeah. hungry for some reason. So. Yeah. yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, close to dinner time here, so sorry for <laughs> <laughs> you can hear. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of questions on the website. Did, I figure if yeah. you have you pulled up, do you want to read them from there? Let's go from uh, to that one first. So the first one is uh, a question that was directed to you. I showed it to you already. Yeah. It's uh, by Zuga Master. Um, uh, what kind of rig would you re recommend to get into character animation? To be totally honest, I'm kind of freaked out by the sheer possibilities of control bones of, for example, the flexi rig. Uh, I get so drifted away with it. I can often get uh, that I often get back to my own super simple kind of shitty rigs. Mm -hmm. So okay. what rig would you recommend? Um, so um, the the flexi rig is not that um, kind of on the scale of super complex rigs to super super simple. I wouldn't say it's it's overly complex uh, at all. So I'm I'm guessing that maybe this person is is just more um, used to simpler rigs. So if that is the case. Um, so it's a fair question. I think the well, is it is it the yeah? It's it's the glass half flexi rig. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, to put it in, into context, I yeah. can quickly uh, show the rig we're talking about currently, which is uh, in it's in libraries right now. Is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, min, for yeah, example. yeah. He's he's talking specifically about uh, the min character rig. Yeah which is a character from our uh, movie Glass Half. And it's based on... Uh, Rigify. On Rigify, yeah, yeah, exactly. With a custom mouth rig that uh, you made, I think. Mean. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And under a lot of pressure. <laughs> I think I, would, I, I didn't manage to completely add in all the features I wanted when it was kind of yanked away from me and then told that it was, it's needed now, yesterday. So, uh, but, but it's still fully functional. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that that rig is in particular quite simple, uh, but if this is maybe a person that's, that's just kind of beginning learning how to animate, um, if I could talk to a younger version of myself, 
I would say stop trying to uh, begin by animating a full flat humanoid and just start with a bouncing ball, then a bouncing ball with a tail, and then a ball with two legs. Like just going through those few steps, um, you learn so much from it that it's, 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 it's just so important to get that foundation first. Just getting a, a ball, for example, with two legs that have IK controls and making sure that you can do a about face, just of the army terminology of, of turning 180 uh, and making it look good with weight shifts or just doing a simple weight shift. Managing that in and of itself is not easy. So if you, if you can't perform that with a ball and two legs, then, um, then you're not ready to, to tackle a full human with fingers and hands and all that stuff. It's just going to be too many variables at the same time. And you're going to start missing, uh, what would you say, like can't see the forest for the trees or whatever. There's just so many variables that you want to play around with that you don't see the things that need to be fixed. Like maybe your weight shift is slightly off because of timing, because of spacing, because of, because the hip isn't moving in an arc. And if you all, if you if you're doing a full fledged character that also has hands and eighteen fingers or whatever, now you have to worry about so many things. Your brain is going to melt, and you're not going to see the obvious. Um, I think I think uh, Shichi Cookie had a couple of rigs that were for that kind of uh, animation training. So they had, I know they had the baker, mm -hmm. which is just like a simple rig uh, but that, it, that is a human. But yeah, they, they even updated it to work with Blend, uh, Blend Rig 5 ah, recently. Yes. I saw that. It's quite good. Okay, yeah. awesome. I haven't tried it. I, I haven't, no, I think I've never tried it. Yeah. I tried the, the, the flexion rig though back in the day. Uh, that was like a beta version of it. So, wasn't, uh, so I, maybe I shouldn't be yeah. vouching for it based on, on that experience necessarily, but it was, it was quite handy. Uh, but I, I'm pretty sure they also have like uh, a ball with two legs oh. that just has these simple, simple IK, IK controls, and that's it. Nothing fancy going on. Um, but regarding humans, I would say that Glass Half Min, that character is, is pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, she has, what, four fingers, right? The cartoon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty yeah, sure. Cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all pretty cartoony, yeah. And and even even with the shading, the shading is kind of flat, so you get away with more stuff. And I did that myself when I was animating her. I I I was taking the, for example, maybe she is in three quarters, and then take the mouth, and you just move it all the way to the side. And if that was uh, in this in this kind of photorealistic texture and all that stuff, it would be horrific. <laughs> But because it was all flat shaded, you could kind of get away with it and enlarge in one eye and make the other one smaller, just make the face a little asymmetrical. So it kind of kind of started being reminiscent of a drawing rather than just a three-dimensional object. You kind of also uh, watch uh, more the, the silhouettes more closely of a character. Yeah, probably. definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I got a question in the chat here um, from Eric K. Can Sergey show us how to activate the DAG, D-A-G, from the console? Can I have a console somewhere? There is a, uh, wait, uh, yeah. Here, hold my beer. Uh, okay, let me make sure that I can share it. What do you need to do, Sergey? I just need to run Blender with, with the command line. Thing. Sure. All righty, sir. Then, yeah, you just drag and drop this. Yeah, that here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, I'm can you guys is see it, that? Is, is it shared? Uh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So. That's it. The, yeah. the graph. Debs graph. Debs graph. graph. Yep. Yeah. And that, yeah, when, that would enable new dependency graph. Nice. So you, just, so you just run it from the console and then. Yeah, it's it, it just like, it's hard to, to, to show it in the, in the cube scene, but it works. And uh, I can vouch that I, I actually tried this version, and every single instance where I, I felt that the, uh, the old depth graph kind of failed on me, and it was giving me this weird lag when I was scrubbing or playing or whatever, I couldn't find a way of, of breaking it in this instance. So 
it did it did fix every single instance that I could find. Okay, it doesn't fix Coro though. Yeah, he's he's a llama. Nobody <laughs> really like he's he's a little. But the old Coro or the new Coro? Yeah, well, there it's, well, it's, it's new. Yeah, because yeah. the the new Coro we used in the third coming on this, you're using the one from the second. Yes. Oh, the second yeah. is old. So yeah. second Don't is, pay attention so, to oh, that. Oh, oh, it's really Ooh. old. Yeah. Throw it away. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Juan Pablo, uh, who, who is also the author of uh, Blendrick, uh, he did an excellent job rigging our characters. And uh, for uh, for Caminandas 2, uh, we had the, the third or the second iteration of the rig. Second. Second? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and now it's the third. Yeah, exactly. Oh, coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and uh, the current version is based on Frank from uh, Cosmos Laundromat. So uh, he just deformed the sheep rig into a llama. Yeah, I think I think he. Uh, it's it's just about all the bones and all the mechanisms and everything from Frank the sheep from Gooseberry, except for the face. The face, all the features there, they were left alone. So yeah, but we, but we did um, we did do that while I was still doing the layouts. Uh, meaning that I had to use an, the older version of him, and I couldn't reuse any of the poses. So, oh. so knowing that, I'm like trying to do the layout, and knowing that whatever I do, even if it looks good, it's gonna be, have to be redone anyway. Yeah. <sighs> but so yeah. just as a, um, because we talked about simple and complicated rigs, like if you have a really like in your face complicated rig like uh, blend rig. I mean, mm -hmm. it's very capable, but it's also very, very in-depth and complicated. Yep. How do you make it workable for you? Because you also want to work on the thing and actually get some something done and not dig through all these bones all the time. Yeah, so, uh, so always do, of course, experimentations with your rig before you start doing the big shot that you want to animate or whatnot. Um, just by doing a simple walk cycle or whatnot, you tend to realize what bones work for you and what don't. For example, in um, uh, for Frank in Gooseberry, and this is also this, like what I'm about to say regarding Frank is going to be exactly the same for the new version of Coro because it's basically a copy paste the the whole leg system and everything. So I found that, uh, for example, there was there were these kind of butt bones or hip bones on the side that. Uh, I wanted to use, but I couldn't move them in the way that I wanted to, but I could rotate them. And then I started un, uh, hiding all these different, checking out all these different bone layers, and I found this, these parent bones that were called scale bones, and they gave me the same functionality, but on top of that, I could move them. So I ended up just, uh, every time I wanted to use the character, I would unhide all the bones or like 90 percent of them which gave me just thousands of no not thousands maybe millions millions and billions of bones uh, and then i would go through the uh go through the bones and i would click the ones that i felt that i wanted to use and hide them click hide click hide just going over and just cherry picking them and once i thought i had them all i would do um uh, what do you, uh, reveal hidden? No, unhide, unhide bones. Yeah, and, unhide. yeah, and that they, selects them, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that would select them. So now I can do Shift H, and now I only have those bones. And with the selection sets, I could just add a new set, call it main bones or whatever. And then from now on, those are the bones I'm gonna bones I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use. <laughs> I will get all the bones, but then I have to just select select the selection set again, hide everything unselected, and I have the bones again. One of the main reasons for this is, uh, of course, it's it's to have it less cluttered, but also if you keep if you keep like me, I I want want a, any particular frame to be a painting, meaning that I key all the bones, even if there's like this little blink bone that I'm not going to use in a particular pose, I, I key everything on location, rotation, and scale, just to be sure. I don't want any surprises later on. Uh, if I had more bones than I, that I was going to need, now I'm adding too much information, and by the time I finish my, my shot, 
the, the, the entire scene is going to play on one frame per second and it's going to be awfully slow. I had that, I actually had that with Gooseberry. Uh, the, the big shot where Victor is uh, putting, uh, taking the noose from, from Frank the sheep. In that shot, um, it was, I didn't notice it, but, but I was, I was uh, keying too many bones. So slowly and steadily, uh, the scene was getting slower. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't feel it. So, so every two hours, it was getting slightly slower, slightly slower. So I didn't realize this until two weeks later when my frame rate was half of what it should be. <laughs> wow. And then at some point, I, I started just experimenting with, with selecting all these bones that I was never going to use and just clearing the keyframes. And all of a sudden, it went back to the normal frame rate. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So, so th That's those crazy. kind of things get handy, especially when you have a big scene. And, yeah, and complicated characters. I don't really get like anymore. It's like a, it's like a rat. It's like a rat. It's like a rat. It's like a rat. <laughs> I thought there was like an optimizer, like a key, like a clean, 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 clean key frames key kind of tool. Frame. Kind of tool. Yeah. So, so there's two of them. There's one that kind of takes all the curves and tries to make a curve pass that the computer thinks is a cleaner one, but. Um, uh, that one is a bit dangerous, I would say, because in that case, sometimes it will kill a keyframe that was really uh, meant to be there in case you want to tweak timing or, or whatnot. Uh, but we, uh, Sarah and I, we asked Antonis if he could add another one of those that just you select the character, you select all the bones, and then you clean all the keys that aren't doing anything how do, I, how do I say it in a sentence? So, so all constant. Yeah, so point. all bones that just have exactly the same value in the entire scene, like nothing changed the entire scene, just delete all those keys. They're, they're not necessary. But if a bone has any tweaking going on at any point, just leave that bone alone. That was a sentence. Yeah. yeah okay. a, <laughs> how, does, how do you, uh, how do you, yeah, how do you call that? Like, oh, um, how do you find it? It's a, uh, where is it? I, I know the 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 old shortcut used to be O. By the way, that was that was not fun when I accidentally hit the O key at some point and didn't realize that shortcut was a thing. <laughs> so all of a sudden, my entire keyframes just uh, like half of them got deleted. But um, it's in the just so maybe people in the graph editor. I yeah, guess. can you you can grab Ooh. Those old shortcuts? <laughs> Here we go. So, channel and marker select mute. Or maybe it's in the top sheet. You just rendered a cube. I rendered the cube. <laughs> I was holding down shift, I swear. This computer is not used for using Blender, Anything, by the way. Really. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go here. Have some keys. That's uh, oh, not that it matters, but keys or whatever. Yeah. And so there's clean keyframes, and then there's clean channels. And I think simplified channels is probably more of the constant one. Yeah, yeah. So the well, the channels is the one where you clean the curvature, and then the clean frames is the one where you uh, remove the the key uh, yeah keyframes for bones that aren't needed. Pretty sure. Just click them. Click. Well. Oh. Well, it's not really going to do anything because this is a horrible example. Yeah, you're. It's a really, really bad example. Yeah, not good. Now, here it is. Clean the keyframe. Yay! It actually cleaned the keyframe that wasn't needed. Okay. <laughs> maybe you need to select more. Maybe, yeah, I guess it's maybe, not a rig. So. so that's that's the thing. Like, if developers test something with a queue. We need, we need something more complicated. More complicated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you get my. We got a question. We got a question. Yes. From uh, we got a question. Uh, we got a question. Uh, uh, of course. Can RJ say when the D, when the DAG? Sorry, not. I'm not a super technical guy. Can Sergey say when the DAG will be officially enabled in Blender? Well. I guess it's it's about new dependency graph because we already have dependency graph. So so during two point eight series we will enable a bit by default. The, the 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 thing is we cannot avoid breaking rigs. Okay, with the new dependency graph, some rigs just don't work at all anymore. 
that 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 for example if you if you if you get old coral rig and had real dependency cycles in in the rig itself and new dependency graph solves them in different way so all of a sudden your 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 rig does not behave properly anymore you cannot afford doing this for 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 no reason because in in, in most cases probably nobody is going to notice new 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 power of, of new dependency graph but at some point you'll need to to, to sacrifice compatibility to just say hey sorry guys you've got much more powerful things it's overrides and something else and the 2.8 is the, the the best timing to, to to enable new dependency graph by default and drop old one into canal and yeah. don't worry <laughs> about it anymore yeah that that's what happens when you when you you're making a rig and it gets a little complicated and you want to make something specific, but you can't figure out a way of doing it. And you stumble upon this problem, and you're, you're doing all this lateral thinking, and you're trying all these different ways, and you figure out a way of doing it, and it's kind of this hacksy kind of way. Yeah, yeah it, it just exploits wrong behavior of, of current dependency. Exactly, so, so when the thing actually gets fixed, all these little hacks, they don't work. Um, yeah, so so people that and I know people that are riggers that have been exploiting these little yes, yes, uh, yes. little things. They have to go back and do a cleaner version of it. So for the compatibility issues, will there be a way to point out the errors or, if possible, uh, convert the new rig to work? No, no. It's, you 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 can well because current dependency graph, most of the cases it's more like a Russian roulette. Because it's kind of based on on, on a physical address and memory, uh, which defines we 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 which where to break the, the cycle, and we cannot really predict this. Mm. It's, it's it's really quite complicated thing. So we can point out, hey guys, there is a dependency cycle in this rig, and I would really love to have some visualization tools for 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 riggers and uh, animators, so we can see, okay, there is your dependency cycle. Between these bones, and we visualize them and say what exactly causing it, like if it's constrained or something like this, and to, to help figure out the, the, where the problem is. But other than that, I don't think we can make huge help or for, for, for transferring new older rigs to a new system. Right. Yeah. But uh, different question, uh, the one that's on the Blender, um, on Blender today, and I, I don't know if we talked about this, um, but can we calculate cloth simulation using GPU? Is, is that a possibility? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Poor guy. I didn't want to answer this question this morning. <laughs> the, 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 there is technical possibility of doing this, but it's not possible currently in Blender. For example, the, I, We'll be using some uh, quite old solar for clothing now, you, which wouldn't run on, on GPU. But uh, recent, like quite recently, Ballot had the, the soft body simulation and Ballot really had GPU support. Yeah, that was Ton's point this morning. He said that for Bullet, it's probably it's okay because it's very simple soft body type simulation, but for complex uh, interaction where you need to get wrinkling and self collisions and that kind of stuff, it's probably not uh, an ideal system, so. There is no ideal system for, for physical solvers. Yeah. You, you kind of need to know where, where, what exactly you're solving. Otherwise, you'll end up with some really comprehensive solver which will be really slow and usable. It's like you would need to, to choose which one to, 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 to use and think of this, but. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting topic to research, but currently it's not possible. But but it, technically, it, it's surely possible. Yeah. If you had more developers aboard to look into this, then it would it, it would come faster. I'm throwing my money at the screen. No, at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make me bigger. I don't actually have anybody. <laughs> this, this might be a good time to post a link to the Blender Development Fund and yes. and yeah, we, we have Blender if you can type it in there. Yeah. Uh, there we go. You guys make an amazing piece of software that many of us use worldwide. So, yeah, if you guys want to see this stuff, uh, help them out. Blender.org slash foundation slash development dash fund. Yeah, you can also find it simply on the front page. It's also, I believe, in, in, this, in the splash screen of Blender itself. 
Oh, really? I think so. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, where is the mouse? Right here. There we go. Oh, you're so slow. Uh, you know, I don't yeah. see it on my. Oh, I do. Uh, it's is it very, very tiny. Can, yeah. can we get that updated? You need yeah. to have a bigger button. Let's make that yeah. a two point seven seven. <laughs> <laughs> bigger donate button. Uh, we got a question in uh, the Zoom chat here. Uh, will the new DAG support a dependency cycle where two objects are constrained as child of each other, but both child relations is not, are not enabled at the same time during animation? No. <laughs> okay. that's, the, that, 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 that's the short answer because oh, wow. the... Thanks, dude. The, Wait, does that work in reverse? Can I, I like it grab one? Here. <laughs> <laughs> a viewer just gave me a beer. <laughs> wow. So, so, so the, the thing about the dependency graph, it, it, it stays exactly the same for the full animation and the enabling, disabling constraints does not change dependency graph. So it's, it's 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 quite difficult to 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 achieve what uh, the question is about. I don't see this happening or see the, this somewhat priority for for not to be resolved because it's, the trend of because we can in theory rebuild dependency graph, but then all of a sudden you have really poor performance because uh, rebuilding dependency graph is not necessarily cheap operation to do. Trying to to avoid this. Um, maybe with, with, with new node-based thing, will be, it, it will be easier to detect what what parts of and branches of dependency graph we, we might ignore, which we can just temporarily hide from from, from the later little bit. It, it could be helpful, but it's mm -hmm. it's undefined current current answer is that it's probably not going to happen soon. So that's a no. <laughs> that's a no. I like it. What what's something from the deve the Blender developer side of things? I mean, obviously the 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 answer is always is more people, more resources. Um, but what is something like you wish someone could spend time to focus on? What is like I wish we had a developer to focus on what, what particles? What uh, particles. Yeah. Yes, particles. Are like we we've got a couple of really old uh, regions of Blender which were not upgraded in years now. One of them is particles, which currently we cannot really solve because every, like well, when you've got report and the bug track are involved, something is being broken in particles. You go on researching code and find out, hey, it actually was a workaround for another case. So you have a choice, either you fix current bug, or, which is reported, but then you break compatibility or introduce some other stuff in there. And it's currently, it's really just a, house built of cards and you move one card and everything collapses and, and currently just consider all the bugs that to do for now because it's 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 not efficient to look into those issues anymore. And that's one of the, the areas where we need someone to reconsider everything. Uh, other area is texture nodes. It's a miracle they still work <laughs> because there are so many ways to, to crash Blender with them. And they, they were never upgraded. There's also a sequence, video sequencer, mm. which is, yeah, which well, is well, the, 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 this dude use it a lot. <laughs> In fact, edits all his videos. Yeah, I mean, I'm the one guy that's like, no, I, I, I want to use Blender for everything. And yeah, yeah I, it's, it's I, sometimes stabs me in the back. <laughs> and full team tells you, hey, no, <laughs> sequencer is barely usable. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I got Anton to do the text thing, and yeah. that's so cool. I can add yeah. little text. Yeah, yeah. So now, if I make a tutorial, I can like do little comments. Yeah. So, so, so we we, we need to re re revisit the way you interact with all the strips, and you you create effects and stuff like this. It's something which should happen in sequencer. It's not a rocket science. Come on, guys. There are developers of, of video editors there. <laughs> I, 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 I can almost see you. Come on, <laughs> show yourself. Yeah, all right. there, there's a bunch of questions. Do you want to take some? There's some in here, and I think there's some new ones in the website. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take one from Blender today. Uh, there is uh, one uh, four hours ago. Mm. 
uh, I know how to model and I know how to texture, but how do you make a decent UV layout and what is the benefit of multiple UV layouts maps? Okay. You just do three on the rough. Yeah. Well, okay, so I'm, I'm not a very good UV unwrapper. I'm lazy, but I do that occasionally. But um, so how to make a decent UV layout? Okay, well, it's a trial and error, I guess, because... Uh, Themes first? Yeah, of course, you, you need to, well, you need to, there's, there's diff different models require different UV uh, uh, layouts. For example, you would uh, unwrap a face differently from, let's say, a, a jumper or something. Um, so with a face, you actually want to make sure that you place your seams uh, in places where you can hide them. And uh, in, in a jumper, for example, or in a piece of cloth, you can actually put them in the actual seams of yeah. the, the, the cloth. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's different with, with each model. So you have to make sure that there is no stretching and that you're making, uh, making the, the most out of your space. So actually, for the first time you, uh, you actually get a model for uh, UV unwrapping, you have to consider the texture that you have uh, and uh, the texture sizes. So uh, how big is the texture? Is it 4K, is it 2K, or does it have to work in a game where you have much less uh, texture space av available? And uh, then you need to make the most out of your space and you have to make sure like, that you scatter all the parts of your mesh across that uh, map in, uh, as efficiently as possible. Can I, can I uh, ask a question just regarding exactly this topic? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not a texture expert on any level. Uh, and I've always wondered this because I never, I never really asked this question ever. <laughs> So you know how that classical face UV Mac thing? Yeah. So because it's trying to hide the seam at the back of the head, which makes sense because yeah. you don't want you don't want scar face going on, you know, yeah. like you want to minimize the potential of that. But that means that when you flatten it out, the the smallest area is gonna be the face because yeah. it's gonna be distorted in that way. But but you want the highest details to be there. Is there is there a risk that when you look at it? the other chunks look more high rest than the, the actual chunk? Or? That's true. If you work with uh, the, the unwrapping, uh, just like press unwrap and that's it. Yeah. But the thing is that you once you're doing the seams and then you unwrap, then you need to pin those vertices that you, uh, that, that, well, you need to pin a couple of vertices. There's no, like, no rule to which vertices to pin, yeah. but pinning, uh, and, uh, pinning allows you to define fixed points in that UV layout, and that way you can actually live unwrap the mesh. So you can stretch, you need to stretch that face yeah. bigger again, and then uh, the, the smaller, the, the back of the head has to be smaller. So you're kind of evening things you out. You have to it. even it out, and that's yeah. a, it's a constant fight and a constant balance of get, making the most out of your space, yeah. but also avoiding, the, uh, avoiding stretching. Um, yeah, it's it's really uh, it's really the the most the, the biggest amount of time just goes to uh, finding like making sure that it doesn't doesn't stretch. Yeah. And uh, of course, you want to have in areas that are actually going to be in close up. You want to have uh, enough definition so uh, so you can do that. And for example, for bump map, you need to do twice the uh, the definition. So uh, yeah. Actually, use the word uh, whatever <laughs> <laughs> definition. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's it's. There is no uh, universal solution to it, and yeah. it's it's just trial and error. Um, there is one which is called Ptex. Yeah, Ptex. Yeah, I was actually going to ask about Ptex. Where's yeah. that? But also, I mean, uh, uh, currently the texture painting tools and Blender are very, very, very good. And uh, if you just if you do. A decent unwrap doesn't have to be a totally perfect. Uh, you can get away with a lot of uh, stuff. And especially the seams aren't that much of a problem anymore because you draw in the mesh directly. So yeah. most of the seams actually, you, you don't see them. But they still shouldn't be in the middle of your face. <laughs> but uh, for some things like for, uh, for Otti, for example, for, uh, from coming in this uh, three, um, he had a seam that separated his beak uh, to his face mesh, which oh. in return made his beak bigger. Yeah. But um, 
then his face was like this and his beak was like that. <laughs> it was okay because we needed a lot of detail on his beak so uh, we can have uh, bump mapping and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and in the end, it was possible to hide the seams because uh, there was also uh, hair and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, that's, uh, that's an extreme case. Like I wouldn't put the nose in a different, like split the nose from the rest <laughs> of the UV uh, setup. So yeah. yeah. Um, then the, the, the other part of the question is why, when do you use multiple UV layouts and maps? Um, there was one instance, for example, uh, for Victor in Cosmos Laundromat, he had uh, a tweed jacket and uh, his uh, the jacket has a pattern, right? So, the, uh, for example, uh, you have different patterns across the, the jacket. For example, the arms are uh, have a, a, a sort of a crosshatch pattern in in squares, and then the rest of the jacket has another crosshatch pattern, but it uh, has double lines on each uh, square. It's like uh, what do you call it? Tweed or something? No. Tweed. Tweed. Yeah, yeah tweed yeah, jacket. Tweed yeah. Um, so. Uh, and then, in addition to the to the the patterns of the fabric, you also have stuff like wear and tear. For example, the 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 yeah. uh, the elbows are uh, worn down. So what I did was I used two different uh, two different UV layouts. Uh, one that was just for the uh, for the patterns, which was a much more convent like a much more conservative. Make sure that there's no stretching. Yeah. That the size of the pattern of the pattern is the same all across the jacket. And then the other one, which was painted by hand, uh, was just like was more freely, and it uh, it focused on the areas that that were more visible. Yeah. So that's where you use two different UV layouts. You need to combine two different patterns on top of each other, stuff like that. Cool. I, uh, cool. I have a question. We have 11 oh. minutes, so maybe we should do like a lightning <laughs> speed round. <clears throat> I, got a, I got a question from the IRC chat from a, a Tom Rosendahl. I don't know if you oh. guys have heard of him. Rosen, uh, Rosendahl? Oh, okay. Rosendale. Some, uh, what, what does Sergey think about AMD? <clears throat> okay, we're going to have to cut the live feed. <laughs> <laughs> well, they kind of works sometimes and sometimes it manages to render without crashes but currently it's 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 it's, it's quite unpredictable platform to work with that's the best answer we're gonna get yeah <laughs> i think so unpredictable uh um, um, from this talking with this amd a couple of hours ago trying to render bmw scene on it and they just rendered the uh, windshield incorrectly why all right. All right. So we, there is one on yep. Leonard today, which is uh, one for you. Oh, okay. Sarah mentioned in one podcast one simple way to select a full curve in the graph editor. How do oh, you yeah. do that? Um, so, um, which shortcut? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple, but like if you, for example, the L, oh, the L, right? Oh, yeah, the L, L works exactly the same. But I think she mentioned that um, if you click on a channel, um, it shows it to you, and if you double click, it selects it all. Oh, it's but, just double, double yeah, click. Yeah, yeah, I think because double click did something at some point that nobody ever used and or did nothing, I don't know. And she was asking Campbell about this, and I think he tried it out, and everybody seemed to be like, all right, it's uh, no big deal. Uh, uh, let's not try that, it's gonna take too much time. <laughs> okay, no worries. Yeah. But yeah, I think, uh, so there's a couple of ways of doing it. One, one of them is just hovering over the, the graph and pressing L or pressing just one of the keys and doing control L or double clicking the channel. That's my answer, sticking to it. Okay, next up. <laughs> <laughs> um, is nine, it, nine minutes. Yeah, is it possible for a third person to co-produce a short with Blender Institute? If yes, how? That's Tom! <laughs> Well, I um, uh, well, it is possible. Yes, you just have to email to ton at blender.org and <laughs> ask him directly. I think it's possible because yeah. uh, like, it depends on the type of co collaboration and also on the budget. 
and stuff like that. So, but yeah, it's probably best to get in touch with Tan directly. Yeah. He's the mastermind here and uh, he'll be able to help you out. So to Andy, did you notice any change with the new smoke cache? It seems like Gooseberry Tornado is getting a bit, and then the, and then there's missing the rest of that question. Okay. Yeah. It's getting a bit. Well, Gooseberry Cache will not probably work in current master because we had quite some hacks in, in Gooseberry Branch. So you shouldn't compare Gooseberry Branch with, with current master, actually. Yeah, the, the Gooseberry, I would not uh, really uh, advise the uh, Gooseberry. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, use, uh, I wouldn't advise using the Gooseberry Branch for smoke caches. There's nothing better in there than in current master. But there's a lot of things that are worse. For example, the fact that it doesn't delete caches. You need to do. Uh, you need to delete caches manually all the time. Well, so, that's a good thing. You don't lose caches. Yeah, you never you lose feature. caches. Yeah, that was a feature for you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you, there is some regression in behavior of small cache between previous release or, and current uh, release candidate. Then go to a developer that blunder that org and report a bug in there. There should be no difference in there. All right. There, there's a question in the chat from Dale. Uh, where does right. the fluid simulator sit in the list of priorities? Somewhere from very top to very bottom. It's, 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 it's hard for me to answer what, um, where it, it exactly is because there is some activity in, in the mantra flow branch. And uh, maybe Kevin Detrich and Lucas are also discussing the, some ideas in there. But currently, there is no huge development going on there apart from the, the mantra flow branch. And I'm not sure how far uh, that branch planned. Okay, it's, it's definitely something which we'll be looking into, like some more unified physics concept thing for 2.8. Yeah. So next. Next up. Uh, I think we ran out of questions. We ran out of questions. Cool. Oh, no. There's one. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no press, please. <laughs> oh. Look at that oh. face. Okay, oh. thanks oh. for answering last question. One feature request noise texture with evolve. So it works with volumetric textures. No feature requests to Sergey, please. No. <laughs> it doesn't like no, it. No, no feature requests. We don't accept feature requests. <laughs> but what there, 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 there is BF dash fun org mailing fun list. Yeah. You can mail it there. But what is noise and evolve? Do you know what he means, actually? The, for the uh, evolve function for the noise texture? Not really. So it can be used for small? Oh, OK. It, it's probably to make, to, to, to make uh, procedural textures uh, available for, 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 for volume in yeah. 3D thing. Yeah. Well, it's somewhere in, in to-do list to, to make more attributes for working for the metrics shader. Something the, uh, the Los Angeles Blender user group uh, would like to say hi. So, uh, Sterling, would you like to say hi? Hey. 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 Hello. Can you guys hear us? Yep. Oh, uh, okay. Awesome. I'm going to pan the room here to see. We can't see there. anything. We can hear you, but not see you. Oh, dear. All right. We'll need, right. A, yeah. we'll need a minute. Oh, I can hear you're panning the room. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give me one sec. All right, can you see me now? Yeah. Yes. All right, good. Welcome. Uh, this is the Los Angeles Blender User Group. Uh, hey, 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 there. Six. We've got about eight of us in the room at the moment, in the, the room's building. So thanks for joining, guys. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. Los Angeles. Sean Kennedy is. Yeah. Yeah. He also had a presentation earlier. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. About the new developments for the, the compositor. Uh, he actually oh. found the bug <laughs> while he was doing oh. it. <laughs> oh. But right. you know what? Right, I'm not going to say it. 
<laughs> so there is a question. What is Sergey working on? Oh, that's a good I'm, one. I'm talking to to, to computer. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but 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 currently, like, if you listen to 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 a podcast from Blender Institute, Ooh. which is blah, brought to you by Cloud to Blender. <laughs> oh, wow. Are you the announcer? Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So 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 I'm currently working on speeding up uh, DDH building and then uh, making more optimal DDH for hair and motion blur stuff. That's so awesome. Thank you. So, so, uh, that, that's my priority for the development current thing. Cool. Well, guys, I, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, I think we've answered all the questions. And uh, thank you so much for coming at us twice in the morning and in the evening. It's been, uh, it's been incredible having you guys yeah. here and having all these great answers, and, you know, kind of a nice back and forth. Uh, oh, thank thanks. you. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, and thank you to all of the people who submitted questions and all the people who are, who are hanging out both on Twitter, on Blender today, and of course, uh, in the Zoom chat. Um, well, with that, unless do you guys want to say anything else before you head out? Check out Caminantes Lamigos <laughs> and share and like and comment. I don't know. Well, <laughs> Blender.org. <laughs> and as always, have a nice day. Nice. That's red line. All right. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> See ya. Bye.